are the world's strongest men, coming together at the most anticipated strongman competition. Considered the heaviest competition in the world, these men will battle each other and themselves. Records will be challenged and some will fall for the ultimate prize to become champion of the Arnold Strongman Classic. Welcome to Columbus, Ohio, everybody, home of the Arnold Strongman Classic. I'm Sean Woodland with Steve Slater. And Steve, today we will witness feats of strength that you cannot imagine. You know, Sean, the Arnold Strongman Classic is an annual competition featuring strength athletes from all over the world. The competition is geared towards lifting the heaviest implements ever created to find out who is truly the strongest man. And the Arnold Strongman Classic competition began in 2002 as part of the Arnold Sports Festival, the largest fitness festival in the world. It started as a bodybuilding competition, but now it has grown into a week-long event highlighting all kinds of athletic feats. Arnold Schwarzenegger and the festival organizers wanted to give people something they had never seen, a strongman competition dedicated to pure strength. And that's where Drs. Terry and Jan Todd come in, both record-setting powerlifters and strength scholars. It was this powerful duo that created these awesome strongman events, things like the Austrian Oak, the Timber Carry, and Apollon's Wheels. And we will see both the Timber Carry and Apollon's Wheels in this competition. Past winners are some of the world's greatest strength legends, including Mark Henry, Brian Shaw, and eight-time champion Zadrunas Zavikas. This year's competition looks to be the heaviest and most difficult to date, and the question remains, who will be victorious? Ten men from eight countries will compete in five unique events, and at the end, one will be crowned champion. My name is Haftar Yulish Bjersson from Iceland. I am Jafar Sokaro, I'm from Canada. My name is Mateusz Ostaszewski from Poland. I'm Mateusz Bielszak from Slovenia. Mikhail Shivlikov from Russia. Jerry Pritchett from Avondale, Arizona. I'm Rauno Heinla, I'm from Estonia. I'm Dimitr Savatinov and I'm coming from Bulgaria. My name is Mateusz Kieliszkowski, I am from Poland. Brian Shaw, USA. I'm six time Estonian strongest man. Yeah, I'm seven times Canada's strongest man. I hold uh, two world uh, records in the dumbbell. Yeah, самый сильный человек России. I am three times Poland's strongest man. Back in March, I won America's strongest man. Uh, this will be my fifth consecutive uh, Arnold uh, Strongman Classic. It's first time on, on Arnold Pro Stage. You know, this is the final. This is uh, where the top 10 get to uh, come in and battle and find out who the strongest is. Brian Shaw, uh, Haftar Bjorsson, uh, Jerry Pritchett. Jeff Caron. You know, the level of competition, it's, it's always stepped up. You know, everybody comes here ready to rock and roll, you know, bigger, stronger, uh, more prepared. The ten of us that are here aren't here for no reason. So, you know, you can't just put it all on one or two guys. It's, it, everybody here is tough. All winners from 2017 coming here to battle again and let's see who will win. It's a hard sport, you know, a lot of injury can happen. It's very hard on the body, but the strongest win all the time. Last year's champion Brian Shaw is considered a favorite to win again, but he will face a tremendous challenge from the mountain, Hathor Bjornsson, who has gotten better every year at this competition. And don't rule out the young Mateusz Kieliszkowski, who's consistently getting stronger. But in reality, it is any man's competition. These are currently the strongest 10 men in the world. Nobody can be ruled out. When we come back, it's the first event, the Bag Over Bar, at the 2018 Arnold Strongman Classic. Welcome back to the 2018 Arnold Strongman Classic, and we are ready for the opening event, the Bag Over Bar. I'm excited for the bag throw. It's going to be really fun. I think uh, 75, 80 pounds is possible for me. I was the only man to finish the last bag with 100 pounds. Steve, take us through event number one. Sean, the weight starts at 50 pounds and will increase from there. Last man standing. Each athlete gets 30 seconds to launch the weight over the 15-foot bar. The man who throws the heaviest bag wins the event and earns 10 points in the overall standings. 
This is the first of five events. Jerry Pritchett out of Arizona, skipping that 50 pound bag and opens up at 60 pounds. Pritchett's trying to put the pressure on some of the other men in the field right off the bat. That is no problem for Pritchett. Next, Dimitar Sabatinov out of Bulgaria, one of the shorter athletes in the field. This is one of those events where height is an advantage. Sabatinov is a powerful guy, but he has to work a little harder than some of the other men here. Sabatinov cannot get 60 pounds over the bar, so his event comes to an end. You know, Sean, some of these guys will pass on the lighter bags. This is just to conserve energy and to force the other men to maybe throw a heavier bag than what they normally would. So strategy plays a huge role in this event. Defending champion Brian Shaw looking on as half Thor Bjornsson steps up to the 65 pound bag. And he will clear that easily. You know, Sean, this event sets up really well for Bjornsson because of his height, because of his power, I expect him to challenge for the event win. Bjornsson steps aside and watches the man he's trying to dethrone, Brian Shaw, who makes 65 pounds. Same story with Shaw here, plenty of power and a lot of height. Jean-Francois Caron up for his second throw, this one at 75 pounds. Heavier weight, same result. I think Caron can challenge for the event win here as well. Matjas Belshak from Slovenia up next. He cannot get that to go, so Belshak will bow out after a good effort. We move to 80 pounds, Hathor Bjornsson up for his second throw. He's basically tossing the equivalent of two cement bags over a young giraffe with this attempt. Bjornsson clears it, and now Brian Shaw We'll try to come up with the equalizer. He's got a lot of reserve. This is Shaw's second throw of the event. And Brian Shaw stays alive. That is 80 pounds, Sean. That is a huge amount of weight to throw over a 15-foot bar. J.F. Carone up next at 80 pounds, and that will not go. So Carone, his event is over. See, that signifies how heavy that bag is. Carone, he has a huge amount of power, but he failed at that weight. Mikhail Shivlikov at 90 pounds, and he will miss. Shivlikov is done, salutes the crowd, and he will finish in third place. And we are now down to the final two, Hathor Bjornsson, and defending champion, Brian Shaw. Bjornsson stepping up to the 90 pound bag. Sean, 90 pounds is a huge amount of weight. This is gonna be incredible. And 90 pounds is good the for bar. the mountain, half your Bjornsson. Didn't even touch the bar. And now Brian Shaw stepping up to 90 pounds. If he makes this throw, we keep going. Sean, check out where Bjorns is standing. He's giving him the eye right there. Boy, I tell you what, if that's not intimidation, I don't know what is. And Brian Shaw will answer. Man, what a great throw. We keep going and we move up to 95 pounds and half Thor Bjornsson is up first. Last year, Half Thor cleared 100 pounds in this event. So he's getting pretty close to that. Let's see how he does. Brian Shaw getting ready as Half Thor Bjornsson makes a run at 95 pounds. And he will make it, and that will keep the pressure on Brian Shaw. OK, watch the master's technique. See how he extended his hips and his arms at the same time and flipped that bag with his wrist? That gives him maximum height. Just an explosive movement. Once again, Brian Shaw needs to match Bjornsson, and Shaw is electing to forego the 95-pound bag. He's going to attempt 100 pounds as he looks for the event win. This is a good calculated risk for Shaw. He's been one of those who's been forced to match Bjornsson. He's trying to turn the tables and put himself in the driver's seat. Shaw at 100 pounds for the lead. And he will bounce it off the crossbar, but he does have time for another attempt. I'm telling you what, Sean, that first one extinguished a lot of his power. This is pretty suspenseful. 
that attempt won't go. So Hathor Bjornsson takes the opening event of the 2018 Arnold Strongman Classic. Brian Shaw will take second, followed by Mikhail Shivlikov. And we still have four events to go. Coming up, can a stone break a mountain? The Arnold Strongman Classic continues from Columbus, Ohio. The 2018 Arnold Strongman Classic continues. I'm Sean Woodland with Steve Slater, and we move to the second of five events, the Stone Shoulder. Sean, this is the legendary Ode Hagen tombstone. It belongs to the Norwegian strongman Ode Hagen. This is such a primal strongman event. Hagen is a record-breaking strongman known for his monstrous grip strength, and he has challenged the athletes to lift his 410-pound natural stone to the shoulder. 410 pounds, that's a lot of weight if you just load it on a barbell, but the awkward shape makes it way more difficult to lift. I think technique's really gonna be key. That's gonna be ugly. It's gonna be brutal on the hamstrings, back, biceps, shoulder, everything. And nobody knows if it's possible to shoulder it or not. The stone weighs 410 pounds. Each athlete gets two and a half minutes to lift it. Points are awarded based on how high they lift the stone. Rana Heinle, seventh place overall after the first event. And Heinle able to lap that. That will be good for two points. If he can stand it up, that's another. Great effort from Heinle, but he just couldn't keep his grip as he stood up with it. Every point is critical in this event. Heinle fails to get the stone to his shoulder, and here comes Machaj Belshak, sixth place overall coming into the event. No problem getting it to his lap, but can he be the first man to get it to his shoulder? Belshak stands it up, and he just can't hang on, but that will be good for four points and gives him the lead right now in the event. With that odd shape of the stone, it makes it very difficult to lift. If that stone was round, Belsac would have had no problem. Belsac gives way to Jean-Francois Caron, fourth place overall after one event. Crone is known for his upper body strength. If he can get it to his midsection, I expect the stone to wind up on his shoulder. Crone has it past his lap, but he cannot show control while standing with it. So just three points, and Matjaj Belshak, still your event leader, with four points. Up next, the youngest competitor in the field, Mateusz Kieliszkowski from Poland, just 24 years old. Kieliszkowski laps it easily. I think that was the easiest lap. And he will get that 410 pound stone to his shoulder, five points, and he is the new event leader. That was picture perfect from start to finish. Kieliszkowski's technique was spot on, and he left himself plenty of time to do more attempts. Second attempt now for Kieliszkowski. And this one looks just as easy as the first five more points for the youngster from Poland and still more time on the clock. This is where I expect his technique to start breaking down a little bit. But both of those first two attempts were impressive. Kieliszkowski looking for another five points. This is his third attempt. And it will count three successful lifts for Mateusz Kieliszkowski, 15 points and counting. This was one of the best performances I've ever seen like this. Kieliszkowski is only 24 years old, but he looks like a seasoned vet right now. I'm so impressed with how he's handling that stone. One more he's attempt for Kieliszkowski. And he shoulders it again. Mateusz Kieliszkowski putting on a clinic, four lifts to the shoulder. Athletes get a standing ovation like this, but Kilzakowski certainly earned this one. This kid has proven he belongs here with the best in the world. Mikhail Shivlikov will have to follow up that performance. He's in third place overall after one event. And he will get it to his lap for two points. You can see he's recovering here, but if he spends too much time here, he's going to lose a lot of the strength he'll need to put it on his chest calling on the crowd for a little extra energy, and it looks like it will work. Shivlikov stands it up, five points, and now that stone is starting to look a little lighter. 
Overall leader Hafthor Bjornsson is looking on as he awaits his turn. Second attempt for Shivlikov as he goes for five more points. He'll need three more successful lifts to catch Kieliszkowski. And that will not go for the big Russian. He will finish with nine points and moves into second place in the event. Brian Shaw, second place overall after the first event. He is ready to take on the 410 pound stone and Shaw will get that to his lap easily. He's trying to find a good grip here so he can move it to his shoulder. But the more time he spends to do that, the more energy he's using. He has to be careful it doesn't burn out his first attempt. Shaw has it secured and will stand it up and now he is struggling to move it to his shoulder, just trying to inch it up. And Shaw, his grip is starting to go on that thing and he will lose the handle, but four points on that attempt. Still more time on the clock. He's out of gas. That first part of the lift really took it out of him. Disappointing result for the defending champion, and now here comes your overall leader after the first event, Hafthor Bjornsson. All he needs to do is get the stone to his shoulder, and he'll stay in first place. And I don't expect that to be much of a problem for Hafthor. Bjornsson has it off the ground into his lap, and he will get it to his shoulder. Five points for the mountain. One more stone to the shoulder with Thor, and he can move into second place in this event. Second attempt for Bjornsson. Struggling with the grip as he tries to bring it off the ground. And with the overall lead secured, Bjornsson is not going to push it any farther. Event two, though, belongs to the youngest man in the field, Poland's Mateusz Kieliszkowski, with four successful lifts, 20 points. Earns him the event win. Mikhail Shivlikov takes second, and it's Hafthor Bjornsson in third with six points. Bjornsson hangs on to the overall lead, and it's Shivlikov now in second. Up next, it's all about grip strength. Event three, the Timber Carry, is coming up at the 2018 Arnold Strongman Classic. We are back in Columbus, Ohio, home of the 2018 Arnold Strongman Classic. The third of five events is the Timber Carry. I'm excited about the frame carry with no straps. I think that's gonna be very interesting. A lot of strong guys that probably aren't gonna be able to finish that because grip is gonna be the limiting factor. Last year was much heavier, but the level of difficulty just multiplies probably by 10 when you take the straps away. So you can't make a mistake in that event. It's gonna cost you a lot. Sean, here are the rules of the timber carry, also known as the frame. They have 30 seconds to carry the 900 pound frame up a ramp for a distance of 35 feet. The frame can be dropped and picked up and the fastest time wins. If the athletes can't make it to the end, then they are measured for distance carried. We will go in order from last to first in the overall standings. First up, Mateusz Ostashevsky. And he is off to a good start. And now the frame is down. This event is so brutal on your grip that once you drop the frame, it's so hard to get it going again. And that is going to be all for Ostashevsky as he moves the frame 14 feet, 6 inches. Jerry Pritchett up next, ninth overall after two events, and this is a great opportunity for him to score some big points. This is one of Jerry's best events. Jerry has an incredible grip. He's got to use that here if he wants to move up in the overall standings. Pritchett is flying up that ramp, and Jerry Pritchett will get to the top. John, I've never seen anyone to handle the frame as easily, even with straps. I think Pritchett's flirting with a world record on that event. And it could not have come at a better time for Pritchett. He is 13 and a half points back a half Thor Bjornsson for the lead. An event win would help him cut into that deficit. We've got some heavy hitters coming up, but Jerry's time is really going to be tough to beat. Canada's Jean-Francois Caron will try to chase down Pritchett's top mark. Caron looking to bounce back from a disappointing performance in the last event, the stone shoulder. The good news is he's still within striking distance of the overall lead. 
Carone with a solid start, but now taking a quick break. The problem with stopping is that you have to find a way to regain momentum on the incline. It's really tough to do, especially when your grip is shot. Carone continuing to work his way up the ramp, and he will hit the time cap. 18 feet, 10 inches for Jean-Francois Carone. Not the result that he wanted here. Now it's the defending champion, Brian Shaw, fourth place after two events. And like Jerry Pritchett, this is one of Brian's best events. Brian Shaw moving well, has yet to put it down, and he may have a shot of beating Pritchett, and this one is gonna be close. Brian Shaw came through when he needed a big performance. The last few feet for Shaw, he did a great job of keeping his momentum while not letting the frame get too far forward and throwing him off balance. Brian Shaw just misses Pritchett's top time by less than half a second. And he is disappointed despite a great effort. Only three men remain up next. The man who won the stone shoulder event, Teus Kieliszkowski, third place overall after two events. And he is going to need a record setting performance if he wants to win. And look out, Kieliszkowski sprinting up the ramp and drops the frame just feet from the finish. And now another drop. I just think he's out of gas now. It took a ton of effort to get to that point and his grip is just fried. Kieliszkowski glancing at the clock, just a few feet to go, and he is not going to get there, but a really good result for the youngster from Poland, 33 feet, two inches. I know he really wanted to finish that, but that effort should be good enough to keep him in contention with two events left. Russia's Mikhail Shivlikov is up next as Jerry Pritchett continues to hang on to the lead in the event. Shivlikov in second place overall, off to a good start, and now the frame is down. He has no shot at Pritchett anymore. Now it's about coming up with a result that will keep him in second place overall. Shivlikov is done, 24 feet, five inches. One man is left, and it is our overall leader, Hafthor Bjornsson, looking to tighten his grip on the top spot in the standings. Another guy who likes this event, but he's going to need a perfect run to take down Jerry Pritchett's time of 9.58 seconds. There goes the mountain, and he will break just before the finish. Bjornsson quickly back to work, and this one's going to be close. Thor did a nice job of quickly picking up that drop. Bjornsson in at 11.8 seconds. That will give him a second straight third place finish. But Jerry Pritchett wins the event, his first win of the competition, and it's a world record performance. Only three men complete the timber carry, and the mountain is your leader with two events to go. Coming up, it's all about the power of the deadlift when the Arnold Strongman Classic continues. The 2018 Arnold Strongman Classic continues as we are set for the fourth of five events, and it's a crowd favorite, the deadlift. There's been a lot of guys pulling big weights uh, coming into this contest, and I think a lot of people are really excited to see what happens on that event in particular. We are four guys here who can pull over a thousand pounds, Brian Shotor, Jerry, and me. You know, deadlift, it's all about power. Since the first Arnold Strongman Classic in 2002, the Hummer Tire Deadlift has been a crowd pleaser and among the most popular events. Hummer tires were used instead of regular plates, making the event visually striking and exciting. In 2016, the Todds and the festival organizers decided to do something different. Working with Rogue Fitness, they created a 10-foot bar and signature steel plates engraved with a silhouette of Arnold himself. This new bar, dubbed the Elephant Bar, has much more give than a regular bar, and it can spell trouble for even the most experienced lifters if they are not able to control the whip and momentum. And that's going to be a big key in this event. Strategy will come into play as well. The weight will start at 749 pounds, and each man will get three attempts. This event really turns into a chess match as some men will choose to pass on a weight and go heavier, forcing their opponents to match that weight. But in the end, the man with the heaviest lift will win the event. And you heard JF Carone mention that there are four men in the field who could make a run at the world record, all of them capable of lifting more than 1,000 pounds. First up, Mateusz Ostaszewski, 
and he will open at 749 pounds. And Ostrzewski may have tweaked something and he is not going to make another attempt. The weight now moves to 816 pounds. Matjes Belshak from Slovenia up next. Belshak is a deceptively strong athlete and this is a very makeable weight for him. And that is good for Belshak, no problem. He has two attempts left. Mateusz Kieliszkowski will step up and try to match that weight. Kieliszkowski trying to hitch that thing up. That is legal in this competition. It's all about moving weight here and not necessarily about technique. Lift is good for Kieliszkowski as he hits 816 pounds. I don't think he's going to make another lift after that. Deadlift is his weakest event, and it took all he had to do that lift. Defending champion Brian Shaw giving the youngster some words of encouragement as the weight moves up again. 846 pounds for Estonia's Rano Heinla. That was too easy for Heinla. His form didn't break down at all during that lift. Dimitar Sabatinov steps up to the bar that now weighs 861 pounds. Another great lift. Sabatinov looked solid the whole time he was moving that barbell. Mikhail Shivlikov is up next, and he has increased the weight to 901 pounds. Shivlikov is a Russian Marine who can pull a lot of weight. He's in contention for the top finish in this event. 901 pounds is good for Shivlikov as he hits his opening lift. And now Jerry Pritchett stepping up to the barbell. This is his opening lift at 921 pounds. Pritchett broke the world record last year, so he's looking to rack up another event win here. And Pritchett making that barbell look light. Shivlikov trying to stay loose as Jean-Francois Caron is the next man up. 921 pounds for his first attempt. This is another man I expect to see in contention to win this event. He could definitely use these 10 points to move up the leaderboard. Now it's the overall leader's turn. Hafthor Bjornsson moving the weight up to 926 pounds. Watch his technique here. Look, he's not even hitching, just stands right up with it. He's more focused than I've ever seen him, and he continues to look like the man to beat here. Wow. I mean, there's a warm up. Matyaj Belsak with his third and final attempt. This one at the weight that Bjornsson just hit, 926 pounds. And Belshak gets hung up at his knees and he cannot complete the lift. That will do it for Belshak as he is out of attempts in this event. Rano Heinle looking for points here as he will move the weight up to 936 pounds. This would be a huge lift for Heinle. He's doing a great job of hanging in there with the big dogs. That will count for Rano Heinle, 936 pounds. Mikhail Shivlikov preparing for his final lift of the event, 941 pounds. He has the weight hung up, but he is keeping with it. Blood starting to come from his nose, and he will make the lift. What a fight from Mikhail Shivlikov. Heavy lifts like this can create massive amounts of internal pressure, and that's why you see the nosebleed from Shivlikov. Happens a lot for him, he will be okay. Only four athletes remain, and the defending champion is one of them. Is a record lift in his future? We will find out when the 2018 Arnold Strongman Classic returns. The deadlift continues at the 2018 Arnold Strongman Classic. Only four men remain. Defending champion Brian Shaw will lead things off. This is his first of three lifts, and he is opening at 951 pounds. Sean, now things are getting serious. Brian Shaw has incredible pulling strength. He is for sure a guy who can have a shot at Jerry Pritchard's world record of 1,031 pounds. And that looks like a warm up for Brian Shaw, 951 pounds in the bag, as Shaw is still looking for his first event win of the competition, but still in second place overall after three events. Jerry Pritchett, the world record holder in this event, 981 pounds. This is where the chess match really gets going as Pritchett is trying to put a little pressure on the other three men who are still lifting. Pritchett hits that with little trouble. And now taking a look at his left arm, we'll keep an eye on that for sure. Jean-Francois Caron is up next. 
and he is raising the weight to 986 pounds as he looks to move ahead of Pritchett. Important lift here for Carone. Knowing your power while making sure you score as many points as possible is what wins the Arnold Strawman Classic. This lift for the lead for Jean-Francois Carone. Too easy. 986 is good for Canada's strongest man. Crone has just one attempt remaining, but it looks like he has a lot more left in the tank. The chess match continues as Brian Shaw looks on as we have our first attempt at 1,000 pounds coming up. Half Thor Bjornsson has moved the weight to 1,011 pounds. Team Iceland's Steven Solvig Peterson getting Half Thor focused. Peterson's a great strongman competitor himself. Look at this crowd, standing room only, as Half Thor gets ready for his lift. The mountain getting the crowd behind him as he stares down 1,011 pounds. This is for the event lead. And give me a break, Steve. That looked like he was lifting an empty barbell. If I were Jerry Pritchett right now, I'd be really concerned about my world record. That looked ridiculous easy for Bjornsson. Now the question is, what will Brian Shaw do? Will he make a big jump or add just five pounds and force the remaining men to lift big on their final attempts? Strategy coming into play as Brian Shaw elects to add just five pounds to the bar, 1,016 pounds for his next attempt. I think these guys are saving their best for last as they all have a chance to chase down Jerry Pritchett's world record. Brian Shaw getting focused as Hathor Bjornsson plots his next move. Here's Shaw at 1,016 pounds. And that will count. Brian Shaw is your new event leader. Shaw always looks calm on his pulls because of his confidence in this event. Jean-Francois Caron is up for his final lift. He has 1,021 pounds on the bar, looking to take the lead from Shaw. Come on, let's hear it for him. The judge is ready. Caron is off to a good start. Look at that bar move. And he will get it. Jean-Francois Caron is your new leader at 1,021 pounds. Three men are left. All have just one lift remaining. Jerry Pritchett is up next, and he is going to try and break the record he set last year. He has 1,036 pounds on the bar, five pounds more than his record lift. Calculated risk for Pritchett. If he makes this lift, both Shaw and Thor will have to set world records themselves if they want to win this event. Jerry Pritchett for a new world record, and it will not happen. You have to think his left arm is a factor here. I wouldn't be surprised if it's still bothering him. Pritchett is done. He will take fourth place in the event, score seven points. His old record still stands, but perhaps not much longer. Half Thor Bjornsson adding even more weight. His final lift, 1,041 pounds, 10 pounds more than the current record. If Thor hits this lift, he really puts the pressure on Brian Shaw. Shaw really needs to beat him in this event if he wants to win the Arnold Strowman Classic. Bjornsson bringing the crowd to its feet. 1,041 pounds on the bar. The mountain for a world record lift. My goodness, Thor just mauled that weight. The crowd loves it. But we may not be done. Brian Shaw still has one more lift remaining. Brian Shaw hoping he has saved the best for last. He has added five more pounds. 1,046 pounds now on the bar. He makes it, he sets a new world record, and wins the event. Shaw looking to keep Half Thor Bjornsson from dethroning him as the world's strongest man. The USA chant coming from the crowd as they want to see another record. Brian Shaw at 1,046 pounds. And it will not happen for Shaw. A final salute to the crowd, and that means half Thor Bjornsson 
picks up his second event win of the competition, and he does it in record-setting fashion. Bjornsson lifts 1,041 pounds, beating Jerry Pritchett's old mark by five pounds. Bjornsson, one of three men to surpass the 1,000-pound mark. John Francois Caron and Brian Shaw, the other two, with one event to go, Hathor Bjornsson leads Brian Shaw by three and a half points, with Mikhail Shivlikov in third with 29 points. When we return, the final event, the Apollon Wheels, will determine the champion of the 2018 Arnold Strongman Classic. The Arnold Strongman Classic is coming to an end, and we have reached the final challenge. Event five, Apollon's Wheels. The Apollon's Wheels, I've been training very hard for that event. It's a great event. Having to do a 400 pound implement that, that's so cumbersome uh, and challenging is not going to be very easy at the end of the contest. What makes this so difficult is that the bar is totally fixed and the wheels won't spin. Manufactured by Rogue Fitness, this is a replica of the Apollon's wheels, which is a narrow gauge rail car axle and wheels. The rules are simple. The men will have two minutes each to clean and overhead press the Apollon wheels as many times as they can. Dimitar Sabatinov on the floor, ninth place overall after four events. Points are awarded based on how high the wheels are lifted. Sabatinov has some great pressing strength. The challenge will be getting right. it to his shoulders. Sabatinov gets the press and has plenty of time left for another attempt. Come on, let's go. Let's see if we can get behind in 15 seconds. Sabatinov looks like he will get the clean, but now losing his grip, and he will go ahead and drop it. That's a smart choice for Sabatinov. There's no way he was going to fight his way out of that. Sabatinov will get credit for one press and he will give way to Ron Heinla, eighth place coming into the final event. Beautiful clean by Heinla. And the press is just as nice. Great opening effort. Heinla with one successful press and plenty of time remaining as he looks for another. He will get it to the shoulders. And Estonia's strongest man has two presses so far on Apollon's wheels. Those first two lifts were just about perfect, but now this is where fatigue starts to set in. Third attempt for Heinle. And he will not get credit for the press as head judge Magnus for Magnuson says he did not have control at the top. Heinle is the early leader with two presses and one clean. Matjas Belshak is up next. The Slovenian is seventh overall after four events. Belshak with a good clean, fighting the way to the top, and it will count. That's a good example of just how challenging the wheels are. They nearly ran Belshak off the platform as he tried to stabilize him overhead. Second attempt for Belshak, and he gets the clean, but he cannot hit the press. Well, I'll tell you, he had that nearly locked out, but I think he just burned out. Belshak with one press and one clean as he closes out his competition. And now the youngster from Poland, Mateusz Kieliszkowski, who had that great performance in event two, the stone shoulder, looking to duplicate that here in Apollon's wheels. I know he wasn't happy with the last event, the deadlift, but this kid has a great future ahead of him in this sport. Kieliszkowski will clean it, but he does not control the press. Maybe a little inexperience there. You have to wait for the judge's signal before you drop the weight. One clean for Kieliszkowski as he goes for his second attempt, and that is going to do it. Really impressed with this youngster. We'll see him again. Mikhail Shivlikov, third place overall coming into this event, and he's fighting a bit of an injury. This is his first attempt. Oh, and he grabs his right shoulder, and Shivlikov is going to bow out. Two men remain. Brian Shaw is up next. He trails Hafthor Bjornsson by three and a half points for the overall lead. Shaw needs a huge performance to have a chance to defend his championship. Look at the bottom of the screen. It's not that often you get a selfie with Arnold. As if Shaw needed any more pressure, his first attempt. No problem on the clean. And the press is easy. Plenty of time left. Sean needs to be smart here. He needs a sense of urgency, but he doesn't want to rush. 
Second attempt now for Shaw. The clean is good. And so is the press. Two great lifts for Shaw and counting. He is not going down without a fight. Here's attempt number three. Again, no problem whatsoever as Shaw has three presses down and he is your leader in the event. Quickly back to the bar for a fourth attempt. You know, it's really interesting that Shaw's wearing those sunglasses up there. I understand it because those stage lights are really bright. Any advantage you can get in this event helps. Shaw will once again complete the clean. And Shaw fighting the press and cannot get it to go. He had to rush that attempt because the clock was winding down. If he had just a few more seconds, I believe he would have made that lift. Shaw with three presses and a clean, and he has the lead with just one man remaining. And that man is our current leader, Half Thor Bjornsson. Two event wins so far. He only needs one press and one clean to win the 2018 Arnold Strongman Classic. I have a feeling Thor wants to put on a show for this crowd. He has no interest in doing just enough to win the competition. He wants to take this event and show the world that he is king of strongman. Bjornsson coming off that world record deadlift in the prior event, rips it off the ground in the press of formality. One down for Bjornsson. Attempt number two coming up. If he cleans it, he wins the 2018 Arnold Strongman Classic. And there it is. Sean, there's your exclamation point right there. And just like you thought, Steve, he is not done. One minute left on the clock. And Bjornsson is going to make another run. Nice landing. It's very common to cheer an athlete on by saying, Komasov. It means come off. The clean is good. And so is the press. Schwarzenegger loves it. Bjornsson once again bringing the crowd to its feet. Remember, he's already won. He doesn't need to do this. And this is a fourth attempt. Bjornsson will get the press, and then he sends Magnus for Magnuson running for his life. Another event win to cap off a dominating performance for Hafdor Bjornsson. The Mountain stands as the 2018 Arnold Strongman Classic Champion. And Sean, I love seeing the sportsmanship and camaraderie with this sport. Who's the first to congratulate Thor? Last year's champion, Brian Shaw. The final results. Russia's Mikhail Shivlikov hangs on to third place. Brian Shaw takes second. Half Thor, Julius Bjornsson, 46 points, and his first Arnold Strongman Classic Championship. A dominating and record-breaking performance for Half Thor Bjornsson. They call him the Mountain. Now they can call him the strongest man in the world. For Steve Slater, I'm Sean Woodland. Thanks for joining us at the 2018 Arnold Strongman Classic. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports.